Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hearts Abandoned Ministries. I'm Rhonda. Today, we're going to go into another word that I feel the Lord has given me regarding His church. And we're just going to get right to it because it's got a lot of meat in it. So let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, for this time. I thank you, Lord, that you are always, always concerned with our hearts, God. You are always concerned with how we're growing, Lord. And I praise you and thank you that we have different platforms that we can give you glory on and that we can listen and learn and hear your word spoken, God. I pray that there be an anointing on my words as we go forward and that my words would not be my own, Lord, but that they would be yours. I pray you would be heard through this, God. I'm just a vessel. Lord, I give you this time and I praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So last Sunday, um, I was in church and we hit another good, good uh, worship song. It's not a new one, and it's not necessarily old, but it's uh, I'm going to see a victory, and uh, the battle belongs to the Lord. Those are the words to it. I'm sure that if any of you are familiar with worship songs, you know exactly which song I'm talking about right now. And during that song, there was a feeling that had come over. There was a sense that had come over the service to where this should be a declaration, um, a decree and a declaration, a declaring that comes out of God's people, that we should always be uh, laying down our troubles and our tribulations. And I know it's hard for us to do, and we all struggle with that. Uh, None of us are perfect at that, um, myself included, but we should always be laying down our battles at the foot of the cross and, you know, claiming out loud and exclaiming and declaring and decreeing that we're going to see victory within our battles because of the fact that if we are truly following uh, Jesus Christ and we are truly discerning the voice of God in our spirit, um, then we know that the battle belongs to him. We know that he is the one that takes our battle. He's the one that fights for us. I could probably do an entire message just on that alone, but I'm going to go into something different here. There was a declaration that had come out uh, regarding that song, okay? And there was, um, you know, triumph that had happened during the service because of that declaration. Um, There were different things that were said. Uh, God was um, confirming a lot of things. He stayed on the uh, the same path through a couple different people. Um, so So you knew that it was him, right? And then by the time I left the church, by the time I got to the end of the service, he started to show me something that exists within the body of Christ. Now I'm not talking about just my four walls and the ceiling of the church that I go to, but I'm talking about the entire body of Christ. We call that the big C. Okay. The body of Christ, the ones that are followers of Jesus Christ. And in that church and in that body, he was showing me something. Now, let me preface this by saying, as I always do, I do believe that the Lord speaks to us. I do not think that it is necessarily little voices that we hear. I do believe that if you learn how to discern the voice of God, you can hear uh, the voice of the Lord in many different things. You can hear it, especially when it comes out of his word, when you're reading his word. That's the first place that he speaks to us is through his word. The next place would be depending upon your experience with him and how long you've known him and your maturity level with him. Eventually we get to the point where we can have this discernment and I call it uh, 
honing the skill. And what I mean by that is you're praying and you're asking the Holy Spirit to show you what his voice sounds like. Could it be a thought that enters into your mind? Could it be a confirmation that's coming from somebody else? Could it be just his word? I believe that it's all encompassing. I believe that you can get pictures and um, uh, lots of different things that are actually God speaking. You always line it up against his word. You always line it up against his character. And how do we know his character? We get into his word and we find out what his character is. We find out what his heart is. So having said that, as a preface, I'm going to get into what I believe the Lord gave me as a word last Sunday as we left the church. He showed me a picture of his church, meaning in like my mind's eye, in my mind's eye, I saw the church again, once again, not my specific four walls and a ceiling, but the entire church that includes my church, but it also includes yours or the next church or the next church or the next church. We're talking about a body of believers that believe in Jesus Christ and choose to follow him as their Lord. He showed me that we are fractured, that we have fractures. Hmm. What's a fracture? A fracture is commonly defined as the cracking or the breaking of a hard object or a material. But we know it, most of us know the term being used uh, as something that's done in one of our bones in our body or something. We fracture a bone. We fracture a limb. Sometimes fractures can hide. Sometimes we don't know they're there. The pain gives them away. And we don't see them until we undergo an x-ray. And we finally see that there's a fracture there. Sometimes we can still operate kind of normal with a fracture. Sometimes we can uh, work through the pain of said fracture without doing anything about it. We can just kind of carry on. I mean, there's athletes that are in great condition in their body and they may have fractured, um, I don't know, something in their foot and yet they're still running or walking. Although as the fracture um, gets bigger, let's say, or uh, becomes more pronounced, then they're going to feel it more. And then they're going to understand that pain and therefore go to see what's going on. Most people cannot fix a fracture on their own. They need a doctor or a team of doctors. I believe that the Lord showed me that many in his church are fractured. They have a fracture somewhere in their spiritual body, arm, leg, neck, not their physical body, but as a metaphor showing that in their being, They've been fractured, and that fracture is not being helped. For instance, an arm fracture in a spiritual sense would be that arm would no longer be able to garner the strength to uphold what God has for that person. There's a fracture in the spiritual sense of that person in their arm. They cannot pick up anything God has given them. They cannot hold anything that God has given them because they're fractured. They have a break. A leg fracture in a spiritual sense would be that that leg is not able to move said body in a forward motion. They can't walk anymore. And so then they find themselves barely standing at one place or another with no forward motion. They cannot move forward in whatever God's calling them because they're fractured, perhaps in their spiritual leg. A neck fracture, get this one. He showed me a neck fracture, which is if there was a neck fracture, how would one be able to move their head? They cannot move their head to and fro from side to side. If they cannot move their head, then they cannot see the direction that God wants them to take or be able to show them what danger is lurking, perhaps. Again, this is a spiritual metaphor to look at. A back fracture 
in a spiritual sense. That would be a back has zero strength to be able to help any and all parts of the rest of the body move. Oh my goodness, get that one. If there was a fracture in one's spiritual back, it's all a metaphor. I implore you right now, if you have ears to hear, then listen carefully to this. Ears to hear means understanding, comprehension. Lord, let whatever hits my head or inside my head fall down to my heart so that I can understand and know and you can give me revelation. A back fracture, zero strength. Just like the the neck moves the head, a back helps the entire body. Think about that. And here's the worst one, probably in a spiritual sense, a heart fracture, a heart that is fractured has had such immense hurt and damage done to it. Therefore, it may not even be able to hear God most of the time, or at the very least, it cannot trust God, rely on God, hope in God due to its damage or fractures. What could cause such fractures? Hmm. That's a very good question. That's probably a question that most of us go to counseling for. (laughs) If you think about it, I mean, let's just stay on the heart part. What could cause a heart to be fractured? Think about your own life right now. I'm thinking about mine. Different hurts from our childhood could have fractured our heart. And because we've never gotten that fracture taken care of, then our heart has been wounded. And therefore, we might struggle in this area or that area when it comes to God, all the while not understanding what's causing the struggle or why am I struggling or why am I constantly struggling? Why is it always a struggle? Some people come to church, follow God, barely all the while denying that they have a fracture. They can feel the pain. They know there is something there. Perhaps mistrust is keeping them at bay or any kind of fear. All of those are coming out of a heart fracture. Pride enters in now. Well, I don't want to fix it. This is just too hard. Boy, let's sit here for a second. I don't want to fix this because it's too hard. That's pride. Um, I don't want my uh, peers in my specific peer group or my church or my job, I don't want them to know that I have this fracture there because they're probably going to think less of me. They're probably going to judge me. Um, I don't really know if they'll think less of me, but I fear that they'll think less of me. Could be that too. Um You might think that they're going to think less of you. You might think that they're going to judge you, but really that could very well just be the fracture talking, allowing that fear to come in. And when I say that's pride, that means that we don't want to lay down our own self and what we think or the way that we think it should be solved and allow God to enter in here. Because if we did that, that might hurt. That might touch an area which would hurt. And I'm going to say again that that is pride. That gets in our way of going deeper with God. Therefore, once pride has entered in, it causes a quietness to surround that person, meaning they start to stuff their problems. They start to stuff their issues. They can function okay for the most part, So they just keep the fracture to themselves. They feel like they don't need a doctor. They can manage the proverbial doctor. They can manage. After all, they've managed fine thus far. They either don't want someone to tell them what to do about the fracture or they're embarrassed and they just want to fix it themselves. As we talked about just a a second ago, the proverbial sweeping it under the carpet takes place and it's really, really strong with these people. 
They just, no, let's just lift this up right here and we'll sweep this little issue over to here. Now put the carpet down, tap the carpet a little bit and say, you'll be fine right underneath there. However, what happens is over a matter of time, the sweeping has caused a mountain of dirt that has risen up and now they must walk around this carpet instead of walking across. Hmm. Some people don't even know they're fractured. Some people do not even know they're fractured. They don't even feel the pain. They have grown so accustomed to passing this pain off as nothing that they exist like normal on the outside. On the inside, they live in this weird world of life symptoms that they've never had any real answers to. Their world is somewhat disarray in their feelings or their emotions. They just think that they're depressed or they're unsettled or etc. fill in the blank. And that this is their cross to bear. I've met many people like that. Well, this is just my cross to bear, or this has been in my family for years, or God knows my heart. And this is just the way that I am. There may be specific sins in their life that they've perceived as normal even. Isn't that sad? Nothing to worry about here. Nothing to see here. They may be the ones who would have had the proverbial remark, does not play well with others, but all the while they think it's because of the others. It's not their fault. It's the others. Well, if I don't play well with others, that's because of the others. That's because of the other people. Listen to that pride. Hmm. These people seem like they have everything under control because all of these things have been stuffed down and they're quiet. They won't let you in. They've been okay thus far. Therefore, they're just going to keep going on. Well, if any of these areas in the description of these people maybe have caught your ear so far, then that means God wants to take care of something. You cannot fix your own fracture, but God can. We have been doing a Bible study on Monday nights lately at my house and um, we're taking a pause right now. Right before we paused for a little while, we've been studying identity. And right before we paused, we got in to the crux of, um, you know, who we are. We had been studying it through Romans 6, 7, and 8, and who we are in Jesus Christ. And I said in this last discussion that we had, I came out loud and I said, imagine, just imagine for a moment if the church, meaning all of Christ's followers, not just our personal four walls and ceiling, but the whole church, if the entirety of the church, if all Christians started to really, really clue in to what their identity was in Jesus Christ and who they really are in Jesus Christ and what the word says that we are. Just imagine how different the church would be. So this prompted a great discussion. Through this discussion, somebody said in a very innocent question, what would that even look like? Now, personally, I would like to give another message, another podcast message on this topic right here. So stay tuned for it. But I wanted to insert this into the fracture word. And, and here's why. What would that look like if all of God's people actually clued in to the identity that they walk in, who they really are in Jesus Christ, and walked in that identity, not that we could create it of ourselves because through the word, what it says is that we are nothing without Jesus Christ. So if we really got into that and we really clued into that and we walked in who he says we are, which is who he is, and we walk in his authority, which is what he says we have because we've come into an adoption situation, an inheritance situation in him, and that's in Ephesians. 
We've been adopted into the family. We have a, a sonship that has taken place once we have accepted salvation. If we really truly walked in that, what would it look like? And the first thing that we started talking about is unity. Once we have unity and we all believed in the same thing, who we were in Jesus Christ, imagine the things that we could do within the body. And one of those things would be, there would be healing of fractures that go on within the body. I would say, I would dare say, there would be no more fractures that existed. Why? Because we would be laying down ourselves and not worrying about what ourselves think about all these things, not worrying about the pain that it's involved in getting it all cleaned up, not worrying about what the other people are going to think about us, not worrying about how we might be judged, not worrying about what the consequences are of revealing these fractures. But instead, we're thinking along the terms of how Christ thinks in that he listens to his father and the father says that he wants to heal us and he gave us Christ so that we could walk with him, not against him, not fighting with him, not relying on our own self and then eventually caving in to Jesus and what he has for us, but walking with him in that identity, in that authority, through the power of the Holy Spirit. God's word says in Psalms 147, 3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Do we believe that? Hmm. No matter the source of your heartbreak or your fracture, God can repair your wounds. But you must believe that first in order to take it to him and lay down your battles at the foot of the cross. He also says that he'll exchange your fracture for something way better. Isaiah 61, 2 through 4, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. But see, this requires you to give to God you must give to God your ashes in order for the exchange of the beauty. Mm. You must give to God his praise in order for the heaviness to be taken off. You must acknowledge the fracture. You must acknowledge the break wherever it is. Give it up to God so that he can heal it. When you go to the doctor to see why you have pain in places, when you go to the actual doctor, he isn't going to treat you without your submission to him. He's not going to take an x-ray unless you agree to it. He's not going to even treat you unless you sometimes sign a paper. Then when you do that, when you submit to him, he is the first one to tell you that there will be recovery time and how long it should be depending on your submission to it. He's going to go in. He's going to perform whatever needs to be performed. Perhaps there's surgery that needs to happen for the fracture. Maybe there's a cast that needs to be placed for that fracture in order to mend it, in order to bring it back to its wholeness. It's just like God. He says, give me your ashes, son, daughter of mine, and I will give you beauty for that. And what he means by that with the new covenant that we have in Jesus Christ is go to Christ, believe who you are in him, believe what he says that you are in Jesus. Once you've received salvation, this is who you become. God is the help that you need for this spiritual fracture that you suffer from. But you must stop walking and tolerating the pain. You must stop uh, sweeping it under the proverbial carpet. That mountain that's under that carpet needs to be dealt with. Otherwise, the fracture will never go away. Acknowledge that your situation or your life is going in that specific way or ways due to the fact that uh, you may have a fracture and you haven't been willing to deal with it. 
God is calling you to go deeper. A day is coming where if you miss this fracture or a new fracture, it could be devastating for you and you may not even know it because that fracture, if it's one that you can ignore the pain from, it could just get deeper. It could get wider. It could get more uh, debilitating and you don't even maybe know why it's debilitating. Or if you know that you have a fracture there and that you've just been stuffing the pain and, and you insist on walking with pain because you're so stubborn or, or bullheaded as some would say. And I know I can say that because I've been there. Then as that pain grows deeper, all it's going to do is make you sicker. It's going to drive you into bad relationships because of that pain. We must learn that in our identity with Jesus Christ, who he says we are in the word, that we can attain that beauty once we've given up everything. Let the Lord be your soul, doctor, your mender of all your brokenness your exchange place for these ugly ashes that you have. And then he will hand you beauty beyond your imagination. It's time. It's time to hand it over. God wants to heal you. He wants to make you stronger. He has things for you to do. And it's quite possible you can't get them done because of these fractures. I'm going to pray. Oh, Lord, this word was deep, and it was maybe even somewhat heavy. And for the listener who's listening right now, God, and maybe it's affected him or her, Lord God, I pray that you just ease their pain. Comfort them right now where they sit and listen. God, I pray that there would be tears. I pray that as their tears come, it's a cleansing effect deep down in their soul, Lord Jesus. You want to mend these fractures, God. Your promises are good. You want to give us beauty for the ashes. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name that as these fractures are being handed over to you, as people are trusting and they're entering out and they're stepping out, that we see in this in the mind, in the spirit, Lord God, that we see these fractures mending and completely going away. And the bone becomes stronger. Oh, Lord, I just lift this up to you right now, God. Thank you for these people. Thank you for this word. Now, I pray that even the smallest message of this goes deep, deep, deep into the prepared soil of your heart. May the Lord bless you and keep you.